Can you just confirm that you can see my screen? It's turning into presentation mode now. Yes. Yes, we can. Yes, we can see it. Perfect. Perfect. So let me let me give you some idea. Why do I even make this call? Uh, this this presentation. I was not really sure about it, but I feel like it makes sense. Uh, so um, this is more like gathering of ideas, and I would like to hear also your input. And it's 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 something that I've discussed like with friends. Like, what do they see us? You know, like uh, new opportunities. I mean, even when I was talking to my boss, like maybe a year ago, about like what could be done with Leap, and you know, like uh, where I feel like maybe the true power is not really used, or I don't see it, or I don't get the feedback from from users. Um, I I feel like this is the right way to take. So this is also why I would like to talk about this and this topic a little bit more often. And uh, you could call it, uh, you know, I didn't want to call them partners, like for Leap, that sounds like a little bit like SUSE partners, like, uh, you know, for us, it's community, right? So, uh, and then community can be also represented by companies behind, like Gato with Neil, for example, and so on. So this is, this is you know, what I mean by companies. Hi. This call. <laughs> Hello, Neil. <laughs> And uh, so, so why should be the next version of Leap in interesting for them? Like, what, what, what could they get? You know, and they don't get like the current release, which is you know 15.2. So you, you've probably already heard about me. So I'm Lubos Kotzman. Uh, yeah, the surname is tricky in German and English. So uh, yeah, it's Kotzman. I am release manager for OpenSUSE Leap since first of first this year, and uh, I used to work on RHEL before and. You know, like on high school, I was really interested in open stories where I, I was leading the uh, local user group. So uh, the agenda, I told you about closing the leap gap on the previous slide here. Uh, I will just repeat it in case that you haven't seen the previous presentation. Uh, it's just one slide here and then I will talk about the opportunities. It's it's like six slides and then discussion. OK, so uh, closing the leap gap. Uh, so as, as spoken before, for those who didn't hear it, it's it's, it's an effort driven by SUSE to bring SLI and Leap closer together. And, and by closer, we mean actually that we will base sleep on SLI binaries. Um, so this was the outcome of the research and, and the jump prototype that we came up with. So right now we have a distribution which you can already download. It's called OpenSUSE Jump, and it's basically a concept or implementation of the concept that should be enrolled in OpenSUSE Leap in future versions, like uh, either 15.2.1 or 15.3. If you watch the previous slides, we will know next Tuesday where we have go no go for whether we may be 15.2.1 release or not. And uh, I would like to talk a little bit about like. What opportunities do we get with the new concept? And you know, like we will have unified code streams. We will have the exactly same binaries uh, on both distributions when it comes to 4,000 packages, which are actually shipped in Swiss Linux Enterprise. I'm not talking RPMs. I'm talking about like let's let's call it SRPMs. Maybe that's 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 better. Um, you know, the concept of building the distribution, um, we will get S390, which which I was already contacted by one company that that's kind of really fitting their workflow for testing applications that they start on lead, then they actually test test some, let's say do some smoke testing, then they actually migrate to, to SD and they finish, uh, they finish some more testing. And, you know, because the smoke testing happens a little bit more often, they actually want to remove the burden of registration, which doesn't happen on the leap slide. And since the binaries will be identical for their scope. It's enough because they have uh, applications that don't need anything that wouldn't be in sleep. Um, you know, like they can really use it, and and for them it's it's kind of really beneficial. And when they heard that it's coming, you know, S390 is coming, they were really surprised because then they can have the same workflow for everything. So this is a big big plus that I see. And you know, the tools that will be available to community members will be also available to these companies, right? So when Neil has access to Jira, you know, uh, Suzecom, and he can raise features, that means that Dato can technically raise features, right? And um, I feel like this is uh, the investment into Leap can actually really pay off for these companies. And, you know, like, yeah, let's talk about it a little bit more on the next slide. So I will not spoil it. So um, the first that I can see is the identical development, development platform. Um, and, you know, like, I would say that you have a lot of people and companies that may be on budget and just, just paying for, you know, like, um, SLE licenses for every, everybody may not be like a good option for them. Like you have a lot of companies that can afford it, but also a lot that can't. And um, you know, uh, if they want to make application maybe available to Leap and SLE, it may be a little bit more effort on both sides. And since uh, since it's identical, I believe that developing one application that that kind of runs on both, as long as you stick with the 4,000 packages, you know, which are coming from SLE, 
it has never been easier because you know it will work. And uh, for 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 the differences uh, which actually appear in between these two distributions, and there are some, you can you know if you if you run the installer, you will see that in Leap you can actually choose KDE, which is not the case in SLE, right? We have a slightly different branding. We have FVC compiler support and GDB test results. We have slightly different install images, uh, you know. And there will be a few more, I suppose. Like, but you can see that the list is relatively small, and it can be kept on single wiki page. And we can go relatively into depth what's actually different. And if you know what to expect that is different, I believe that you know you can really build like a reliable platform uh, for testing or development, and you know it will run on Sli as well. Uh, what's kind of interesting, and I feel like nobody covered it, is that we are still discussing the kernel flavors, right? For for a new leap, um, we have a bunch of options. Uh, we are still undecided. Like you could have like unified kernel, which would be same for SLE or for Leap. You could have different kernel for SLE as a server. And and Leap, you know, you maybe you could reuse the Leap kernel on desktop because it's slightly better tuned for application responsiveness. And um, so this is still kind of you know undecided, but like we are working working it out. It will be definitely solved in 15.3. You can expect that. Um, so I believe that, uh, and you will always have an option that we know that if there will be two kernels, that you will have option to install the SLE kernel, OK? So if, if it matters, like you will be able to use the same kernel. And that, I believe, will make it an ideal development platform uh, for companies on budget or individuals. For you know They wouldn't normally buy uh, the, let's say, subscription for SLE. But in this way, they basically get identical content if you don't count the, the branding and so on. And you can live without SUSE support. So um, the making app available for both and Sli, uh, for both Sli and Leap has never been easier. So what does it mean? Um, so we were talking about building that you build once essentially, and you know that it should be the same libraries and so on. I mean binary identical libraries, not just the same when it comes to APIs, but identical. And uh, the publishing is also something that I would like to embrace. Like you may say, well, that you can already do that with Package Hub, but Right now, if you submit something for Leap, built, it gets built in Leap, it gets shipped in Leap, but you, you know, there is an automated submission or manual submission to backports where it gets built. You know, maybe there is a conflict with some of the Sleep package, maybe it doesn't. You know, maybe somebody has to work work it out, like fix some things first before it can be available. Unfortunately, this part is still going to be problematic. But now you actually don't have to make a separate submission for backports in, in order to have it in package hub because OpenSUSE Leap will actually consolidate backports, I mean, the next version of Leap. So submission, if you actually submit, let's say, package, I don't know, uh, maybe some cute binaries are actually in SLE. Uh, let me think of, yeah, maybe Python cute. Let's say that Python cute wouldn't be in SLE uh, if it is. But um, you would like to submit an update to jump or a future Leap for Python cute. And therefore, you submit submission for jump. And if it's actually coming from backports, you know it will be redirected to backports. It will be processed there. So one submission will be accepted, built once. In package hub, I know that we have the continuous rebuild. But you know what I mean is that you 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 build it just in one project, and it actually gets uh, delivered to Sli and Leap, right? So there should be less effort. So we just handle the submission once, and we know that it will work for both which I see as a big benefit. And also it, it allows us to join forces with package hub people and maybe they can focus a little bit on the delivery to SLE uh, and, and we can focus on actually the leap part, the traditional you know, processing of submissions going through OpenQA and, and, and so on. Um, so I feel like this is, this, is, this is really cool, at least to me. And I can see it already because I'm hitting some requests to add packages to package hub and I see the problematic parts and so on. And, and you know, like since I'm now closer to it than ever, like you know, I'm getting some more knowledge on the area as well. And I feel like this is beneficial for way more people because package hub team is kind of relatively small. And and you know, having extra resources from from release team will be definitely beneficial for both sides. Um, yeah, the, the little letters, if you can't read them, that's the mentioning of the conflicts with SUSE sleep packages. Imagine that you want to add new package, but it provides the same file, so we have to work it out in the end. Um, so unfortunately. This will this problem won't disappear, and I, I see it's currently painful. You know, just to let you know that backwards are using RPM lane, which you know like has access to what files are basically provided by sleep packages, and you know like if there is some conflict, it basically blocks the submission on and you know package is not built and it's not released. So um, this is some sort of sanity checking. 
So uh, next topic is the effortless migration. I already mentioned on my previous talk, maybe even here at the beginning, that the expectation for migration is that you install you know, next generation Leap. And if you want to migrate to SLE, you exchange branding packages, you, you enable a bunch of repos from SCC, which will get automatically enabled by zipper migrate or, or you know, like just migrate and you are done. So we should be talking about like maybe like two minutes or maybe even less, you know, in certain cases, if you use zipper, um, instead of maybe half an hour of downloading, I don't know, like updates for 4,000 packages or, or more, because, you know, like the checksum is different, the release is different and so on. This will not be the case. So uh, again, I've, I've seen one company that, that described me how they use sleep and basically what, uh, I will not name the company, but what they said is that they do smoke testing on leap and then at certain par, par, uh, you know, part of the workflow, if the smoke testing passes, they actually initiate migration to, to sleep and then they continue. And um, since it's identical now, and uh, you know, like don't don't take me like that. You could certify that application on leave. That's not happening. But if you want, you know, like testing ha to happen, and you want to really like make it really short, maybe maybe run it like thousand times a day, and so on. I feel like uh, the quick migration now can actually make this workflow very effective. Also, before I, I knew that the migration migration had struggled with the vendor changes you know so if you actually like replace uh open SUSE sign package with SUSE llc sign package like you actually have to confirm it and so on we are currently struggling with it in jump as well but the the end result that we expect in 15.3 and 15.2.1 if it gets released is that there are no 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 problems and the exchange is actually whitelisted like we actually really you know the 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 vendor change needs to be enabled and and you know like basically be invisible to user because this is the entire concept like if we decide to fork package in leap or if the package from that used to be let's say in in, in backwards is moved to SLE, these changes will happen all the time and you know like we don't want to you know like back user about them it just needs to be very seamless so uh and what i feel that this is a great fit if you know that you are working with binary identical distribution, maybe you are a small startup and, you know, maybe uh, an area where SUSE is kind of winning um, and you know that in the future you would consider migration. I feel like this is the ideal platform that you should start with because like, you know, it will be super seamless. Um, so this is one big benefit that I see. Um, again, like, and this one is my favorite, to be honest, out, out of what you see. Um, so let's say that you are a company, you want to influence SLE and, and LEAP, but like maybe you are too small to become SUSE partner uh, or, you know, like you are not there yet. Uh, I know that it comes with certain responsibilities and so on. But um, if you take maybe case of Neil here and you will actually become contributor to LEAP and you want to make sure that your app stack works on LEAP, um, the future generation of LEAP or, you know, LEAP next, whatever you want to call it, and you have the uh, ability to send submissions to SUSE Linux Enterprise, you know, through the redirection and mirroring as I was talking, you have option to actually open feature request, uh, open SUSE partner request features against SUSE Linux Enterprise. Like, you know, you are basically a partner, um, but, uh, you know, in this, this case, you're also a lead contributor where I see benefit on both sides. And this is what I find like really cool. Uh, I know that Lee, Neil mentioned in the past that, oh, but, you know, like, how do I test that it actually really works on SLE? Um, developers to Zekom may be the answer. I will not tell details because I, I shouldn't, I guess. But uh, if you study it, like, you will figure out that maybe there is a way to solve the problem. So, uh, again, what tools I'm talking about is the Jira access, is the mirroring of submissions. Um, so I hope that this is interesting for you if, if you work for a company that may want to influence SLE and, you know, it's not a partner, but Leap seems to be... A, a viable way to go. Also in the video that was linked in the previous slide or maybe even before, yeah, here, uh, you will see how the actual mirroring works. Um, I mean, there's a bunch of screenshots if you would be interested. Maybe interesting part to say is that the when the submission is mirrored in OBS, um, you know, like, you actually see the person who approved the submission as the creator of the submission on SLE side. But like you can click through and you can actually see the original submission so you can figure out who was the uh, who was the person who opened it. And there you will get like, uh, you know, if you if you write a comment, it, it has to be anonymous because of whatever works cancel GDPR uh, rules. But, uh, you know, you will be able to have conversation with the maintainer in this way. 
So uh, the next thing that I would like to mention is the S3 NTX availability. I, I said it was interesting for one company. I believe it may be interested, interesting, isn't interesting for others. Uh, again, like in various workflows, deployment testing, and so on, where you know this this can find use. I was actually surprised. I thought like, okay, uh, I feel like this may be not exactly like ground for a leap, and I was surprised just by the first company that reached out to me regarding this effort that they would find it useful. Um, one thing that people don't really talk about, and I feel like it's only fair to mention it to the community, is that you know we get extra S three ninety X, but like ARMv seven, the thirty two bit one is not really uh, you know, there is no support for it in SLEE. And we have to work out how to how to do that. So if there would be an intermediate release, we decided that ARMv7 would be skipped here. Therefore, ARMv7 would be would have only 15.2. And then, you know, we would we would actually enable the support in 15.3 again. And it would have to be probably worked out as a separate project. But this is not yet set in stone. So the ARMv7 is still a question for LEE. Like we know that we probably want to do that. Um, you know, we don't want to disappoint people who use it. But uh, how it will be done, like, I mean, how it will be built specifically in OBS is still an open question. Maybe we should revisit the use cases and figure out whether maybe some combination with factory would make sense. Uh, I, I guess the plans are still open. If RMV7 is in interesting for you, I, re I recommend to reach out to, to us. Maybe you want to reach out to Dirk Miller or, or Guillaume. Uh, who is part of the open source release team and you want to actually raise like uh you know your use cases so we can make sure that you know whatever we do with rmv7 matches your company as well so um this is basically all i told you i will have a few use cases which i believe are interesting or you know i was thinking about them in the last few weeks and i was thinking that that could be it like these are the areas where we definitely improve um do you see any other use uh, of how ctlg can help you or you know maybe it doesn't it actually does the exact opposite like feel free to raise any 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 concerns or questions or ideas?